we're now going to be talking about a leak that occurred a, a day or so prior to the trailer coming out. Now, obviously, back in the day with Switch 1, um, we knew that there was a Tegra X1 within it. We didn't know the clock speeds, and um, Digital Foundry was the first to reveal that. Um, we're not really interested in doing leaks and stuff like that anymore, but other people appear to have now uh -huh. revealed the clock speeds that um, the Switch 2 is operating at. And there are some interesting points being raised here and some puzzles which we need to get to grips with. Um, Oliver, do you want to take point on this one? Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, two, or I guess three sets of leaks here, the GPU clock, the CPU clock, and the memory. So yeah, the, the GPU clock here is reportedly 561 megahertz handheld and 1,007.3 megahertz uh, docked. And I think on the surface, that seems kind of reasonable. Um, but I kind of assume that there'd be a bigger delta between those two numbers personally, because the Switch 2 has some pretty beefy cooling. And unless they're deploying a lot of that power portably, then a margin of basically um, less than a two times increase there does not really seem like that would justify the increased cooling. And again, unless that portable mode is really pushing uh, on, the, on the thermals there. Because with the Switch One, you know the stock clocks had the had the portable mode at exactly half the frequency of the um, of the docked mode, up from about forty percent pre-launch, where it was at three hundred seven megahertz, I believe. So that is a little weird, um, but none of that is too unexpected. Like the clocks themselves don't look that crazy. Looks probably within range what you'd expect for an eight nanometer chip of this size and variety here. Um, the thing that is causing people to get tripped up, though, is the CPU clock. So as reported, we have in handheld mode 1108 megahertz in the CPU. And then in docked mode, it's 998.4 megahertz. So that's weird for a number of reasons, right? It, it's low. The clocks are pretty low, but not crazy low. Again, remember this is an eight core CPU on an, on, a, on an eight nanometer process. And also the Cortex A78 cores that are being used here are, you know, larger cores for mobile device. Certainly in mobile phones, what you tend to see is four, a configuration of four of these cores plus some additional low power cores. So to have eight of them in a configuration where you're not boosting or suppressing that frequency dynamically, um, like the PlayStation 5 does, Maybe one gigahertz is actually not that unreasonable, sort of in that range. One gigahertz is not maybe that unreasonable. The really weird thing, of course, here is that you're seeing higher CPU clocks in portable mode than docked mode. If you were to expect any divergence there, uh, certainly you'd expect it to be bigger in the a higher number in the in the docked mode rather than the portable mode. Um, and I kind of ultimately suspect here there's something going on that we don't understand. Maybe some CPU cores are disabled in the portable mode for battery reasons. Uh, maybe there are some other um, frequency modes in this CPU that were not are not being exposed at the moment to the leakers. Um, I would suspect there's something going on here because just on the surface level, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, even if the clocks aren't like that far from where I would expect them to be necessarily. The actual divergence in clock speed there just, I mean, almost just flat out doesn't make sense. I couldn't imagine that on its on on a face value being uh, correct here. I think there must be something going on that we don't yet understand fully. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Uh, of course, it could just be an error. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's the thing. I mean, um, I think we, we should stress, we you know, there's been no confirmation it's an eight nanometer chip, but the evidence does kind of suggest it. And the other thing, of course, is that um, uh, these clock speeds kind of suggest it as well because they're lower than you'd expect. Um, mm -hmm. What can I th say about this? Um, yeah, so we're basically looking at a difference. I mean, the docked mode has like 79.5% uh, more clock than the the mobile, which is which is a lot. It's a, a wider gulf than there was for, uh, with Switch 1. Um, memory bandwidth, which is crucial for a mobile device, um, is like basically 50% higher um, when docked. So there is a, you know, a pretty meaty gulf there between um, uh, handheld and docked performance. The CPU side of things, yeah, that's, that's tricky. I mean, um, obviously the, the original Switch had a locked one gigahertz clock 
And um, that was the same for both portable and uh, docked play. And that kind of made sense, right? It basically said that, you know, the game will operate the same depending, you know, regardless of uh, whether you're playing handheld or docked, but you'll get a graphics boost when docked. That, that kind of makes sense, right? So the difference there, I'm inclined to agree with you, Oliver, that there's uh, something that we're not aware of here. Maybe it is a battery life thing, you know, uh, thermals, who knows? We just don't really know. So yeah, that that's kind of um, uh, kind of a bit of a mystery. Uh, in terms of whether we believe this stuff or not, I'd say that the GPU side of things definitely looks quote unquote plausible. Same with the mm -hmm. memory bandwidth side of things. Um, I'm also reminded uh, looking at the absolute precision of the clock speeds being mentioned there. I am reminded of the Switch One leak. Um, that came from SDK documentation, where that was similarly precise. What I would say is that if you were going to fake this, um, that CPU stuff would be an instant red flag. And if I was going, if I was going to fake it, I would <laughs> basically not do that because, you know, that's already casting doubt, making people ask questions, which if you're faking something is the last thing you want mm -hmm. to do. Um, so I'm inclined to believe that this is kind kind of plausible. Um, the GPU side of things, 1,007.25 megahertz, just over one gigahertz. I'm reminded of the um, RTX 2050 laptop tests I did, um, oh. which has, um, I think it, uh, that 2050 had like 2,048 CUDA cores versus um, 1536 in Switch 2, according to the leaks. I was running that at 750 megahertz, and it's actually quite interesting that you kind of end up with much the same level of theoretical performance between that downclocked 2050 and the uh, um, the specs that we're seeing here. So do take a look at that T239 video because it might be quite valuable from looking at graphics uh, graphics performance perspective based on the Ampere architecture because we're not seeing a huge amount of it from this reveal trailer. And I guess it's going to come down to the uh, live events further on down the road. And of course, the uh, mooted direct, where we're actually going to get to see a bunch more games and get a greater understanding of what this thing could actually do. I think in terms of the what we did see, you know, obviously there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, DLSS, it's going to be a game changer for uh, Switch 2, but there's no obvious evidence whatsoever that, um, that there was DLSS uh, being used in, Sw in Switch to Mario Kart 9 there based on what we saw or any of the sort of uh, next generation features um, which the Ampere architecture can deliver. So that in itself is is quite interesting. Uh, what do you make of all of this there, John? Wow, yeah, you guys said a lot on that and I tend to agree and I'm, I'm siding with this being somewhat accurate given that it's there's some relatively conservative numbers and like you said the cpu numbers specifically being strange as they are are the last thing you would want to put in a faked leak <laughs> in the sense that it would just draw more attention to it right as it is now yeah uh it seems decidedly very nintendo in that sense that there's some <laughs> there's there's got to be a reason behind this selection I mean, I'm obviously happy. I mean, we knew it would, but seeing significantly more memory bandwidth <laughs> compared to the original Switch, uh, just because that was such a bottleneck for the system, mm -hmm. but dropping it significantly between handheld and docked. get So I guess there's rumors that the screen is 1080p this time. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure that that's actually a wise choice on their part, if it's the case. I know... It sounds like that you'd want that, but I still think 720p is a pretty good for the size and also maybe like 900, I don't know. I feel like 1080p might just be a little bit too much because it does increase battery life and it also puts more of a strain on things like memory bandwidth and the GPU, which creates potential bottlenecks in handheld mode. And if we're thinking that, again, there's no evidence that of DLS is being used yet, but we know that the architecture is capable of it. One would have assumed then that they would leverage that more for uh, docked play, but with lower base resolutions, like 1080p, for instance, or lower even. Yeah. Um, but if the handheld is also already a 1080p screen, I don't know. There's that kind of stuff I'm still curious about. So we'll see how that plays out. 
Uh, I'm also pretty convinced now that this is probably eight nanometer, <laughs> as you've been kind of saying all along, and hopefully everybody's well, ready no, to. Well, no, there's no real. Um, it's it's just kind of like, um, what, how can I describe it? Um, Occam's razor, the most plausible. Mm, no, outcome. so that's that's the thing, right? It's like that's just the Nintendo way, and based on those previous motherboard leaks we've had, and kind of looking closely at the sizing, uh, it kind of checks out, right? And like everything's sort of coming together. Yeah, I think the way that we'll eventually figure it out is that either an outfit like Tech Insights, who basically uh, looked at the original SoC and basically confirmed it was a vanilla Tech or X1, uh, I hope they do the same thing I hope they did the same thing here. Yeah, we should also have a pretty good idea of efficiency simply by looking at the capacity of the battery and comparing it to battery life. We'll get an idea of power draw at that point. So, yeah, that will be indicative as well. 